Okay, we have another one of these problems where we have to fill in all the information. But this time, it's going to be a little bit harder because we're going to be involving some square roots and fractions. So, the idea here is we want to find the exact value of all these. As shown before, what you want to do first is set up your triangle based on the initial uh, definition. And then we also have our uh, quadrant that they tell us that this triangle is going to be in. So, we want to draw the triangle in uh, the quadrant that goes along with this. So, I'll do the, the triangle down here. And so, based on that, we're between 180 and 270. That would be the third quadrant. So I'm going to draw it down here, just like that, in the third quadrant. Now, we're going to use the definition for cotangent to fill in the sides of my triangle. So in this case, we have the definition for cotangent is going to be uh, just the reciprocal for tangent. Tangent is opposite over adjacent, so this is adjacent over opposite. So adjacent would be 1 and the opposite is going to be 2 because our angle itself is going to be right here measured from the x-axis. Now one thing you got to be careful about here is you need to put negative sign next to each of these. The reason why is because if you're in the third quadrant this is going to have a negative x value and that's going to have a negative y value. So both of those are going to have to be negative and so if I take negative 1 over negative 2 that's equal to 1 half also so that's why I have to re remember to put my correct signs in there. So it's really important to make sure you have the, uh, the correct signs in there for that one. So now that we have those complete, we're ready to do a squared plus b squared equals c squared. And we're going to do the c is actually the one that we're trying to find. I have negative 1 squared plus negative 2 squared. When I square both of those, I get 1 plus 4 equals c squared, or I get 5 for c squared. Square root, I usually would do plus or minus, but because I'm talking about the hypotenuse, that's going to have to be positive. So that's going to be root 5 uh, on the bottom here. So if I, for, since I have the triangle complete, I'm ready now to answer the first five things. Remember, on these kind of problems, you always want to do the first five with the single angles because then these are going to be used to fill in the double angles uh, and the half angles. So we'll, fill, we'll do the triangle first. So sine, sine is equal to opposite over hypotenuse. In this case, I have negative 2 over radical 5, but I want to rationalize this. So I get negative 2 radical 5 over 5, and that would be my answer for uh, sine theta. For cosecant, I'm just going to flip over the first one I did. So that's going to be negative radical 5 over 2. Maybe it's a little bit darker here so you can see it. Okay, so that was originally negative 2 over root 5. We flip it and we get root 5 over 2. Next, we want to do cosine theta. Cosine is the adjacent over hypotenuse. That's negative 1 over square root of 5. If I rationalize, that's negative radical 5 over 5. Okay, so we get that. Secant, you're going to flip the original one. So I'll flip that and I get negative radical 5. Next, I want to do tangent. Tangent is equal to the uh, reciprocal of cotangent, which in this case is just going to be 2. That's two, uh, 1 over 1 half, flip it, it's going to be 2 over 1. Now, I've done, done with the original ones. I'm ready now to do the double angles. So for sine 2 theta, and I'll write the formula, that's 2 sine theta cosine theta. I'm going to put the values in directly from what I've already done already. I've already done the, the first five. I'm going to put those in. I want to use the rationalized answers because that way when I multiply it, I'll be sure to get something rationalized here. I have two. That's two over one. I'm going to multiply it by sine. Sine is negative two radical five over five. Okay, so I get that. Cosine is negative radical five over 2, or, I'm sorry, no, that's the wrong one. I'm going to put in negative radical 5 over 5. It's this one here. So I have, here's my sine, and here's my cosine. I'm putting both those in directly here. So I get 2 sine theta, cosine theta, and that's going to complete uh, this. So I want to multiply across the top and across the bottom when I'm doing this. So sine 2 theta is equal to, if I multiply across the top, the two negatives are going to cancel out, and I get a positive. I'm going to do 2 times 2. That's 4. Radical 5 times radical 5, that's just going to be a square root of 25, which is going to be 5. And the bottom, I can write that as uh, 25. This is going to be 20 over 25, and if I reduce it, 
I get four fifths. So I get just a regular fraction, four fifths for sine of two theta. Next, I'm gonna do cosine two theta, and as mentioned before, you actually have three different formulas that you can use for that. And it doesn't really matter which one we use. The, the cosine one looks a little bit simpler than this because there's not an extra two in there, so I'm actually gonna use the one that involves cosine. That one's gonna be two cosine squared theta minus one. If I put this in, the, uh, the cosine value is negative radical five over five, and don't forget to square it because the formula has a square in it there. So I'm gonna square this one, and again, that'll give me my exact value for cosine two theta. So doing that, I'm gonna get two over one, square the top and bottom one, I get five over 25 when I square top and bottom, and I have minus one. Now five over 25, that can be reduced, so that's gonna be two over one times one fifth minus one, so I get two fifths minus one, and if I use common denominators for that, should get negative three fifths. So going through all the work there, Cosine two theta, the value for it is negative three-fifths. I'll put that here. Okay, now for tangent uh, two theta. Tangent two theta, we have uh, a formula for it that I indicated in the notes. However, instead of using that formula, instead I'm gonna use this one. Tangent two theta is equal to sine of two theta over cosine two theta. We already did both of those previously, so I can just take my two answers and divide them and get the answer. So sine two theta, we found that already, that was to be four fifths, and then t uh, cosine two theta, that's negative three fifths. So then when I flip it, I have four fifths, uh, flip the fraction on the bottom, I get negative five thirds, the fives cancel, and I get negative four thirds as the answer, that would be your exact value for tangent negative four thirds. Okay, so now that we've done all the double angles, we're now ready to look at the half angles. We looked at the double angles, now we're ready to do the half angles. The next one we're gonna do is cosine theta over two. The formula for that, cosine theta over two, that's plus or minus one plus cosine theta all over two. Whenever you have a formula like this that has the square root with the plus or minus, you need to choose whether it's gonna be positive or negative can't just leave it as plus or minus. So because of that, what we're gonna do is we need to find out which quadrant theta over two is in, and that'll determine whether uh, that's positive or negative based on the all students take calculus sign chart. We start with this one. Uh, your theta is between 180 and 270. You wanna get theta over two, so I'm gonna put a divide by two in the middle because that's ultimately what I wanna find. If you divide that by two, you have to divide the other ones by two also, and you get 90 less than theta over two, and that's gonna be less than 135. So what this says is that your theta over two is actually between 90 and 135. Now this is gonna be in the second quadrant. So if you're in the second quadrant, you wanna use all students take calculus. Now in that case, all, everything's positive in the first quadrant. Students represent sine. Sine is positive everything else is gonna be negative, which means that if you're in the second quadrant, that's what theta over two is in, theta over two is in your second quadrant, that means that this has to be negative. So when I, what the formula I'm gonna use, I wanna use the one that has a minus in it. Again, the reason why, cosine is negative in this quadrant right here because we already determined that theta over two is in the second quadrant. Now that we've determined that, we're ready to proceed with the rest of the question. We're gonna put in negative radical five over five, we're gonna put that in here. So I get negative square root one plus negative radical five over five, all that's gonna be over two. You wanna get common denominators with the top. We get five over five, you multiply, so five minus radical five over five we get, but then that's still being all divided by uh, two. This is technically two over one we're dividing it by, so what you can do is you can take the top fraction, five minus radical five over five, and we're gonna multiply it by the reciprocal of the bottom one, so we're gonna multiply that by one half, and then we end up getting this, negative radical five minus radical five, all that's gonna be over 10. Now unfortunately, this right here, we can't do anything with as far as simplifying, so we're just gonna put that whole thing in as our answer. So it's negative, minus on the outside, and we'll, write, we'll fill in the uh, rest of it. 
Okay, so there's our exact value for cosine theta over two, it's this. The very last one we wanna find now is tangent theta over two. And oh, by the way, I should mention that it's okay to have, in this case, we, our answer was a radical inside a radical. That's okay. It's all right to leave your answer in that form because there's nothing we can do to take that radical out. So you'll find that some of your answers, you may have a radical inside a radical. That's fine to have an answer like that. So now let's go on to tangent theta over two. Now when you do tangent theta over two, uh, the formula that we have does not involve a plus or minus. So because it does not involve a plus or minus, you don't have to do that same process working with this statement here. We're just gonna use the formula, whatever sign we get for that, that's gonna be our final answer. Okay, so we have tangent theta over two, the formula is sine theta over one plus cosine theta. Okay, so we have that one. So we have values for both of those. I'm gonna go ahead and plug them in. I get sine theta is negative two radical five over five. On the bottom, one plus negative root five over five. So I, I end up getting that. We wanna get a single uh, fraction in the bottom, so I'm gonna use common denominators down below there. Negative two radical five over five. And then in the bottom, we get five minus radical five over five. You take the top fraction, two radical five over five, multiply it by the reciprocal of the, the bottom one, and you get five minus radical five here. The fives, those are both gonna cancel out. And you end up with negative two radical five over five minus radical five. Okay, now we end up with this, and again, that answer on a test for my class would be okay, but again, in case you have a homework grading system that requires you to rationalize, let me show you how you would do that. So all this here would be the, the trig portion of it. I'll go ahead and I'll show you this example, how you would rationalize that, because there is a way that we can make this look a little bit simpler. So I'm gonna do that up here. So to do that, we're going to uh, multiply top and bottom by a conjugate. We're gonna do five minus radical five. You're gonna multiply this by five plus uh, radical five. So top and bottom will multiply both of them by five plus radical five. You're gonna multiply across the top and across the bottom. If you multiply across the top, we're distributing here. Negative, negative two radical five times five, that's negative 10 radical five. We just multiply the outside one. You never multiply inside. You can only multiply on the outside. And then this one you have minus two, but then radical five times radical five, that's gonna give you a, a five. On the bottom, when we multiply that one out, five times five is 25. We get plus five radical five and minus, that cancels. And then you get minus radical five times radical five, that's gonna give you a five. So now that we have this, we're gonna do some more uh, simplifying if we can on that. And we get negative 10 radical five minus 10. On the bottom, 25 minus five is gonna be 20. And so now what we can do is divide both of these by 20, negative 10 root five divided by 20, and 10 over 20 here, and that reduces down to negative root five over two minus one half, and of course you can write that as one single denominator if you wanted to as well. So all this right here, negative radical five minus one over two, that would be the rationalized answer, which some of those online homework systems would probably accept that as an answer. So we're gonna put minus root five minus one over two, and that would be the exact value. So again, whenever they ask for exact value, you don't want decimals for any of these. You wanna have the fractions or the radicals uh, as needed.